Good morning, everybody. Welcome to my front yard. I am so glad you guys could join me this morning for a beautiful 55 degree morning here in central Iowa. Uh, our issue for the magazine just shipped out, so you know what that means. Cool morning, week after issue's gone, that means we're sawmilling. Uh, so you guys may have seen the video that we released about a month ago uh, where I assembled this guy. Uh, and this was a cool build, uh, turning two pallets of boxes basically into this sawmill. Uh, and even though we released that video about a month ago, uh, it kind of coincided with an article I had in Woodsmith Magazine. Uh, I've actually been running this thing all summer. Uh, so I've had this thing up and running about six months. Uh, so I've been doing a lot of milling with it. Uh, and this is gonna be the first milling video on here. Uh, so I am pretty excited. It's a uh, beautiful morning out. I got some logs sitting here that have been here quite frankly all summer. Uh, so it's time to get those gone and get those cut up. So before we turn anything on on here and I walk you through the process of uh, taking one of these logs and getting them on the mill and cutting it, uh, let's go take a look at what I have been cutting all summer. Okay so what I have over here is basically the stuff that I have been milling for myself um, all summer long and to kind of ignore the disarray of some of these guys and these guys. Uh, I had somebody out looking at lumber the other day, uh, so we kind of were digging through the stack and I have to get those reassembled. Uh, but what we have here is basically been my personal lumber stash uh, for this summer. Um, I've been doing a ton of milling and most of it uh, has been actually for people. Uh, the mill is pretty much paid for itself at this point um, in six months, which has been amazing. Um, so, Starting in the back back there, uh, we have some walnut and ash. There's actually some uh, shag bark hickory back there, um, which I have discovered does not dry very well, uh, at least not without twisting. Uh, you see that stack's a little leany, so that stuff needs to uh, probably get banded the next time I cut shag bark hickory. Uh, and then moving up front here, uh, I have some ash. Uh, the arborists that I work with have been bringing me a ton of ash trees. Um, you know, with the ash borer kind of attacking everything, uh, most of the trees they're taking down right now are ash, uh, which thankfully we can save. Um, so these trees, even though they're getting taken down, will live on in some form of future project. Uh, so we have, you know, one log there, one log here. Um, this was a crotch section of, I believe, this tree. Uh, and then on top of there, we have some red oak. Um, that was actually cut for the uh, the Woodsmith magazine article. Um, kind of cut some red oak and then left the pith in this huge 6x6 beam. It weighs about 100 pounds. I just moved it. <laughs> uh, and we have some soft maple. Uh, so these two logs right here are soft maple. And it's not usually something that I would cut and keep well it looks really leany from where I'm at but it's actually not uh so that's not usually something i would cut and keep uh, however this tree down here this is the lower section of the tree that's the first i don't know maybe three four feet above that bottom section uh it's all curly uh it's super super curly stuff it's beautiful beautiful uh maple so i cut those i actually have one more log this size that i had cut from this tree um in Cedar Rapids, uh, a couple hours away from us that I have to go pick up. Uh, so not something I would usually cut and keep just because soft maple is, uh, it's soft, right? So, uh, but kind of circumstances and it being completely curly, uh, made it worth the while. I don't know if we'll be able to see any of that curl on there. Yeah, maybe a little bit. So, uh, those are gonna be beautiful, beautiful boards when they're done. Uh, done drying. Uh, and in here, this is all quarter sawn sycamore. Uh, so these were two big trees that one of my arborists were taking down. They were about 35 inches. They were they were big boys. Um, we cut those quarter saw on them. So these uh, these ones up top that are live edge on one side um, and not the other. Uh, those were actually the center three boards. And then we quarter sawed the outermost edges uh, to get me all that stock down there. So that stuff's all ranging from probably five inches to about 12 inches wide uh, for those bottom two stacks. Um, so those are all banded together, stacked, leveled, and ready to dry out here. And then I have some uh, white fur. 
uh, kind of an interesting tree. I went and sawed this uh, right after we had a storm hit Iowa. Uh, most of these came from storm damaged trees as well, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but this is a white fir, uh, kind of an interesting wood to cut. Um, nice wide boards there. You see those are probably close to 22 inches wide. Um, but what I'm finding, because this was a storm damaged tree, is I'm getting a lot of, uh, there's a lot of wind shakes in it. So these cracks um, are not, I don't believe, drying cracks because uh, they showed up as I was cutting the boards. Um, I think it's wind shake from the, the tree being violently shaken as the wind pummeled it. So uh, another big piece of ash there. Then I got one little one little red oak log. This is one of my first adventures with the mill, uh, hauling it somewhere and cutting something on site. Uh, so just a little red oak. Um, not necessarily my favorite wood to cut. Uh, but, you know, if it's free and I can save it instead of it being cut into firewood, I will do so. Uh, and you kind of see some of those medullary rays in that center slab. So this will be kind of cool. Uh, so let's take a look at what we're going to be cutting today. All right, so I'm going to hand hold this with my phone so hopefully I don't make you get sick. Uh, so I have a handful of logs that are sitting here ready to cut. Uh, these two guys are big pin oaks. Um, I don't know if you guys can tell how big those are. They're like, I don't know, they have to be close to 12 foot long. And they're about 35, 36 inches. Uh, they're super, they're super knobby. Uh, you know, there's a bunch of branches on them. They'll be super cool, I think, if I can get them on the mill. Uh, they're just so heavy. I think those logs are about five to 6,000 pounds a piece. Um, so it might be one of those, like, rent a loader to get those cut. Um, but they're, uh, they're pretty cool. Uh, back behind me, I have some, uh, those are, it's an ash log. It's a big ash log. That's pretty, uh, I think that's probably a little bit bigger than I want to put on the mill, so that might, that guy might become some turning blanks with the chainsaw. Um, that nasty walnut, too. Um, it was a removal job. We've been down on the ground for a number of years, so at some point I'll probably put him on the, on the mill and cut it up. Um, and remember how I said I don't necessarily always pick up soft maple. Uh, these are two soft maples. It was kind of a I don't want to say it was a favor for one of my arborists that I work with, um, but that is a nice straight log. So for drawer boxes or something, it'll work just fine. Um, then I have this stack over here. Um, got some beehives in the background. Uh, hopefully they're, uh, doesn't look like the girls are flying yet. So we should be safe. Uh, so here is a pile of logs. Um, so what we have here, this was actually a, a, uh, a removal job, uh, kind of north of Des Moines a little bit, one of my arborists did. And they, uh, I, I love these guys that I work with. Um, this was, this came from Crow Outdoor Services. Uh, they had a loader and a dump trailer, so they picked up the nice straight logs and loaded them up and brought them here to me. Uh, so we have two walnuts here. Uh, I have, what, two, four, five, I think five ash here. And they're all pretty good size ash. They're about 18, 18 to 20 inches, so about perfect saw size. Um, and then I have two pine right there, and I have one more pine under here. And when I got this load of logs, I was like, hey, why, you know, why the pine? That's not something we usually keep. Um, but he's like, well, you know, it was there, so I just threw it in. Uh, and actually, I had a guy stop out about a week ago uh, looking for some pine. So it's like, Hey, I have three logs. So the guy, uh, decided to buy those logs and I'm going to cut those for him, uh, in a little bit. Uh, we do have two other logs I saw. And these were the ones that I was really interested in cutting. Um, I mean, obviously we need to cut the pine, uh, because I have an order for it. But, uh, so this log, I'm going to flip the camera around. This log right here is a, uh, this has been laying here now for longer than I care to admit. My wife's kind of, I'm sure she's getting mad that she sees it. And my neighbors see it every time they pull out of their garage. This is an elm. And I'm not sure exactly what type of elm it is. Because uh, you can see it's very, very gray. Um, or very white. However, when I picked it up, when we picked up that log, it was, it was dark. I mean, it was very dark red. It almost looked like a cherry. Uh, so I don't know if it's a red elm or an American elm. Um. Here in Iowa, we also have Slippery and Siberian Elm, um, what some people also call Chinese Elm, which I don't technically believe is an elm. Um, but, you know, uh, I'm interested in cutting this. It does have a weird, it has a, a crotch in it, 
But the entire trunk, and I don't know if that comes across real well, the entire trunk is kind of twisted. Um, so I think it will be an interesting one to cut. Uh, it did come out of an, a residential, came out of a back alley. Uh, it was an interesting job picking it up um, because it was super tight in the alley. Uh, however, um, I don't think there's any metal in it. That's famous last words before I put a new blade on and hit metal. Um, but we'll see. And then we also have uh, this little guy. Uh, this is just a little little cherry log. Um, it's about oh, 14, 16 inches in diameter. Um, it is actually, that was a removal. Uh, again, the guy is at Crow Outdoor Services saved that cherry. It was a beautiful cherry tree. Uh, that is one of the uppermost sections of the trunk uh, that was pretty limb free. Um, the other section of it uh, we cut for actually a popular woodworking uh, magazine article. Um, that is currently at the printer uh, here in early October. So uh, that should be coming out shortly. Uh, but this is the, the cherry log that we cut for the article. Um, so just a beautiful, beautiful cherry. Um, about probably 22, 24 inches in diameter. Um, had a, a beautiful crotch section up here. Uh, so got some really nice figure in some of these boards. Um, had to trim it a little bit with the chainsaw to get it on there, uh, to get it in between the guides. Um, but it cut very nicely, uh, and it was a beautiful, beautiful tree. So I'm excited to get into that smaller one too, because I'm guessing that's just going to be nice, plain, straight grain cherry. Uh, so let me uh, go ahead and flip over to the other camera here. I'm actually going to jump in the tractor, move some of these logs around, get them all staged up. Uh, but first, let's walk around the mill, because I don't think you guys have seen that. Okay, so uh, you guys may have or may not have watched uh, the assembly video I did on this guy. Um, I don't know why I'm calling my mill a guy. Uh, but anyways, uh, if you didn't, I'll leave a link to it below so you guys can check that out. It's kind of cool to watch this whole thing get put together off of two pallets. Um, so starting up here at the saw head, uh, this is kind of the business end up here. Uh, obviously, we have... Blade, pair of guides in there. Um, got a little bit of an upgraded engine up there. I, I went ahead and when I bought this, I upgraded to the, I don't know if I'll be able to get in there and see, it's the uh, 23 horse Vanguard. Uh, it's a little bit bigger motor than is standard. I think standard is either a 17 or 18 horse. Um, the engine seems to be phenomenal. Starts every time. Uh, it is electronic ignition, which is super cool. Um, handle here for pushing the saw head up and down the track uh also have this is the the throttle throttle and it also turns on the water um so this is a water lube um and it comes down through that tube and drips right there in, next to the uh the movable blade guide now that's the for a couple things uh that's mainly to keep um the blade cool and it helps keep pitch off of the blade. Uh, so if you're cutting, cutting something really sticky, uh, keep some of that sap down. Uh, and just helps really prolong the life of the blade. So looking at the bed, uh, we have six leveling jacks. Um, and those guys are used to, uh, once you unhook it from the truck, because this is movable, uh, use the jacks, lift it off the tongue of the truck, and then you can level it. Uh, and I just keep a keep a eight foot level with me uh, to make sure it's nice and level. Otherwise that, that head will roll back and forth down the track as you're trying to cut, which is really annoying. Um, so nice and level. And I, then I level it front to back or side to side as well. Um, we have the bunks. Uh, so logs sit right here um, across. There's, I believe, four of them in there. I actually have an extra one uh, in the garage. I need to install at some point uh, so I can do some shorter stuff because right now, if a log does not fit between those two, or if it's not long enough to span those two, rather, uh, you can't really hold it without getting a like a 2x4 or 2x6 and laying it down flat in there. Uh, so I'll probably put another one in, of those in at some point. Um, log handling and locking so we have some tow boards here uh, those guys just have a little hydraulic bottle jack on them uh, there's one there and there's one down on this end as well and those are used to compensate for log taper so if i have a log that is really big on one end small on the other end i can level it uh, with those jacks uh, to 
uh, get the best grain out of it. Uh, we got log stops over there. You can see they're they're a little messy. Um, I milled in the rain one day. Terrible idea. Uh, and then I also have log dogs, and those guys will lock the log up against those log stops. Uh, now, this is the one thing that people always are interested in, is how do you load these logs? And I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, but we have these two ramps, uh, these guys here, obviously, uh, that are removable. They sit on the track, um, kind of lock onto the track. And then there's a winch. Now, I have upgraded. That was one of the few upgrades, or one of the few changes I've made to this mill from, uh, from Norwood. Uh, I added that electric winch. I had a couple days where I was doing a lot of jobs, uh, six or eight jobs in a day, you know, 20, 25 logs in a day. Uh, that becomes a lot of cranking. The hand crank winch that was supplied with this thing worked great. Uh, it worked awesome. Uh, it's just my shoulder doesn't work that great. So after a couple long days, I decided, you know what, for the what 80 bucks that this guy was uh with and then you know maybe another hundred dollars for a battery uh it was completely worth it so i'll show you guys how this works uh in a minute uh but the logs just roll up the ramp you wrap the the winch over top of it uh you come under the log and then the winch hooks back to the frame of the mill so as you're winching uh the winch is actually pulling against the frame of the mill and in turn rolling the log up the ramps. It's super slick, works great. Um, I've loaded some really, really big logs with this. Uh, I think the biggest we've loaded on here is probably close to 4,000 pounds. Uh, just a huge, massive log end. Uh, it's amazing what you do with some mechanical advantage. So I'm gonna jump in the tractor, I'm gonna move these logs, get them all staged right here in front of these ramps. Uh, then we'll start cutting them. That's right. Okay, so I have, uh, what, the three pine, the elm, the cherries over there, I can roll that. Not that big a deal. Hopefully that wind is not too loud. Um, but at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and load this guy. Uh, so like I mentioned, winch is gonna go over top. Uh, let's do that quick. Okay, and we're hooking back to the frame, right there. Uh, and that winch, uh, the winch assembly slides into a receiver. Uh, it can go on either side, so I can load with the winch on that side, winch on this side. Uh, if I can, I prefer to load with the winch on that side uh, because then I'm pulling up against the log stops. Um, so the receiver has two holes, that's what the hook hooks into. We're going over, under, back to the frame. Uh, I am going to crank the head up a little bit. It gives me a little more clearance for this end. Um, I am going to have to trim this. Now, uh, this elm log is just a little, little long. I think I could probably squeeze it out, but I found it's just easier to trim it um, than try to squeeze out the extra length on it. Uh, but you can see that pretty big crack. 
Uh, and that looks like that was where a crotch was. So I'm guessing that's maybe some rot in there uh, from water sitting in the crotch um, and kind of seeping down in there. So I'll trim that. Uh, you can see from this view that it's not gonna clear the head. So I'll probably end up cutting it eh, right in that area. Uh, just enough that it's gonna hit that bunk, uh, but leave me enough clearance for the head. Oh, don't tell me I'm out of gas. Who left my chainsaw out of gas? Oh, me. Chainsaws run better with gas. I don't know if you knew that. I obviously don't. See that most of that crack's gone. There's a little bit right in there, uh, but I think they'll be okay. Um, and actually, now it's in the right orientation. Uh, I want that crack to be zi sitting uh, parallel with that crotch. Um, I want that crotch to lay flat. It's going to be uh, the nicest figure. Uh, not that, not that Elm has the best figure, but it will have something. Oh. All right, that was easy. We can roll it. I think we can roll it. Yeah. Okay, so I think that's how I want it, um, more or less. So you can see it's much taller uh, than it is wide, which is good. Um, you can see those two blade guys up there, maybe. Uh, we gotta make sure we clear those. Um, so going the width wise can cause some issues. This lock's just a little weird and they don't like to load when they're a little weird. Uh, they like to kind of walk all over. Um, but you can see it in that orientation, I think. Uh, yeah, we'll cut right through those crotch sections. And this will be interesting. It will just be interesting. It smells like elm. All right, we'll make a couple slices. Shoot's blocked. Hmm. Why do these?
language will we have? I think this is an American album. Not 100% sure. I think it's American. It's just some nice looking wood, you know? I'm, I'm not a huge elm fan. Uh, I have some, and I've used some. Uh, but man, that's not bad. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Yeah, it's pretty nice stuff. Nice flat cuts. Uh, sometimes when you get in a crotch section like this, uh, the blade wants to wander and wave a little bit uh, just because of all that compressed grain. Uh, but that's cutting really nice. Yeah, that's good looking. So at this point, uh, cut basically halfway through the log. Uh, now I'm gonna roll this over, put this on its belly. Uh, so the flat part will be down on the bunks. Uh, and then I'll just work basically from the top down, get the rest of the uh, boards off of here. Um, a little bit easier to do if I had my second set of dogs closer to this end. Uh, I can flip the teeth out of the way and roll it. Um, but since I, I'm too lazy to move them, and I have not done so yet. Or installed my second set. Throw it by hand. Okay. Yeah, we'll just lift it.
clip. You know, I must say, I almost never been my favorite, but I like it. The elm is done. Uh, pine next, I guess. The guy that wanted these uh, wants well, five quarter. Five. The elm uh, and most everything I cut that eight quarter. Um, I just I find it gives you more options. Um, but this guy wants these as five quarter, so that's what we'll cut. I have a mess. I have a mess. <sighs> so I think that pretty much wraps this up for today. Um, holy cow, I have sap all over me. Uh, so I was, I was planning on cutting that cherry log too, but because I am a, well, some refer to as a super genius, uh, I stacked all that pine that I cut for that order on top of that cherry log. I'm not gonna unstack it right now. Uh, so uh, that'll wait for another day in another video. Uh, 
So I'm interested to hear what you guys think uh, price-wise, um, or what you guys pay where you're at uh, for lumber. Um, you know, milling this, I've, I've milled a lot for people. Um, you know, this is maybe only about a, oh, probably a tenth of what I've milled uh, with that mill. Uh, I think I probably went through 50 or 60 bandsaw blades on that thing uh, over these last five or six months. Um, and it, it's a little different when you're milling for somebody. Uh, you know, generally I'm getting between $75 and $100 an hour uh, mill time, and that's usually enough time to get through two or three logs, uh, depending on what they have. Um, the bigger the log, generally the longer it takes, uh, just because there's some more maneuvering to make sure it's going to fit. Um, but for example, that pine uh, that I had an order for, um, I ended up with 19 boards that are about, uh, they're live edge, both sides. Uh, so they taper from about uh, 14 on the big ones uh, down to about eight inches. Uh, and other ones are about 12 down to eight, seven or eight. And they're about 12 foot long. Uh, so my rough calculations uh, ends up being about, so it ends up being about 200 board feet or so. Uh, just, that's just me doing it in my head as I am uh, walking. That's not even close to right. Okay. So after actually doing some math, I think it would probably be closer to 250, 300 board feet there uh, that I just cut. This is all inch and a quarter, so it's all five quarter stock. Uh, and because it's green, um, I'm charging $200 for all that. So uh, 19 boards, uh, about 250 board feet, a little bit less than a dollar a board foot green for pine. Um, I thought it was pretty fair. It basically covers my mill time, um, maybe a little bit extra for the logs, um, but we did have uh, fuel and time in keeping the logs and hauling them about an hour here. Um, so I'm interested to hear what you guys think about uh, the pricing on that, because uh, it's always a weird thing trying to price uh, lumber. So, and quite obviously I'm getting a lot of it. So uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, I hope you guys like this milling content. This is the type of content that I really enjoy making, obviously. Uh, so I'm looking forward to doing some more with it, especially now that it's fall, it's cooling off, uh, and I'm not uh, going crazy milling at everybody else's place. Uh, now I can do a little bit more at my house uh, with the logs I have. Uh, so make sure you hit subscribe. Uh, if you guys want to see more of this content, let us know uh, because that gives me uh, some extra uh, oomph to get it done. Uh, so we will see you guys next time.